In this video, we're going to talk about sampling and study design. So this video, is the majority of it is going to be vocabulary. So bear with me while we talk a little bit about sampling and study design and then write these in your notebook. So overall, there are three ways that we can collect data. We can do observational studies, experiments, or surveys. And when we collect our data, there's always some types of bias that we have to consider. And bias comes from the fact, largely in part, that we're human beings and things that we do are sometimes biased by outside factors. So the first type of bias we call question wording bias. That is when the wording is confusing or misleading. Like in a survey, if you're asking something and the person you're asking doesn't quite understand what you're asking, the response could be biased based on the fact that they didn't quite understand or it was misleading them. Under coverage bias is a population not accurately represented in the sample. For example, you are just taking a survey from like a little radio station and the only people that hear that broadcast are a small portion of people. So it's hard to take that data and represent a population because it's just a sample of people that might listen to that particular type of music and live where that radio station covers that area. And then response bias is when people give false or misleading answers. So sometimes what they say to the response to the question could not be accurate. Like they tell you that they don't drink when they really do, or they never play with their cell phone in class, but they do, and things like that that they don't want you to know about themselves. So you can have response bias, especially when people don't want to give you the truth about what you're asking. So with that type of survey, you'd want to give it to them in a way that they would be anonymous or be more willing to tell you the truth so you could help eliminate that bias. Non-response bias are when people just refuse to respond to a survey. This happens a lot of times if you're asked to do something that you wouldn't want to do, like mail it back to them. So like you normally don't want to put a stamp on something and mail it back, so you throw these surveys in the trash. And then you only get responses from people who are much more responsible or wouldn't mind putting a stamp on it. Maybe they have more time in their day. You just don't get an accurate response from that survey. A voluntary response bias is when people are asked to call in or respond to a survey by mail. So it's similar to the non-response bias. Like if we don't get responses, then we can't really collect much data there. And then voluntary response is when people just voluntarily don't respond so you're only getting people that are more outspoken that respond, like to the radio station. The only people that are going to call into that radio station have a pretty strong opinion about what you're asking about. You know what I'm talking about. When someone calls in and goes on and on about something, they are pretty outspoken about it. But are they the only ones that have an opinion about it? Of course not. All right, so let's look at the five types of sampling. So a simple random sample is really the overarching idea here with all five of these types of samples. A simple random sample is when all individuals in the population have the same probability of being selected and all the groups of the sample size have the same probability of being selected. So for example, a stratified random sample is a simple random sample. That's like our very basic type of sampling that is more specified in the next four. So by doing a random, simple random sample, we could do these other things to make it a little different than just being a simple sample. A simple sample might just mean we take all of you in Holly Springs High School and put them in a big hat and we draw out some names. Everyone at the high school had an equal chance of being chosen. So that's a very simple random sample. But a stratified random sample, the second type, is when the researcher divides the entire target population into different subgroups or strata and then randomly selects the final subjects proportionally from the different strata. And so maybe at our pep rally, for instance, we divide it up by freshmen, sophomores, juniors, and seniors. Those are different strata or subgroups. And then maybe from those subgroups, we chose some people from each category, like freshmen, sophomores, juniors, and seniors, and proportionally from each one. So like maybe we chose the people that were in the front row of each of those groups because that would be easy to get out of the crowd. So let's look at the third one. A systematic random sample, you might have heard of this type, is when the researcher selects a number at random in and then selects every nth individual for the study. So maybe they stand at the airport and every fifth person that walks through the door they ask them the question about, you know, how many carry-on bags do they have or something like that or what airline are they choosing. 
and they're just talking to every fifth person. So they'd have to count till the fifth person comes by. Let's look at the other two. A convenient sample. This one is the worst type of sample for being accurate about your data, but it sometimes happens just because of the word, of course, convenience. So a convenient sample is when subjects are taken from a group that is conveniently accessible to a researcher. So for example, picking the first hundred people to enter the movies on a Friday night. So some businesses will try to take some surveys and maybe they want to skew the data so it looks like everyone loves their product. Well, they might take a survey of people that are like in the aisle of the store with that product and then ask them, you know, are they purchasing that product? And those people in the aisle with the product are probably more likely to be purchasing that particular item than just anyone in the store. Like, let's say we're talking about something in the hardware department. If they only ask people that come into that aisle with that hardware that they're asking about, then you're going to probably find people that would purchase that item more so than if you just go ask anyone in the entire store if they would purchase that item, just for a random example of that. But there are plenty of examples of where something's convenient and it creates a definite bias to our data. But businesses like to use that to make it sound like their item, their product they're trying to sell is the best out there. So be careful whenever you listen to someone trying to sell you something of what the data is showing and where it came from. The last one is a cluster sample, a sample technique where the entire population is divided into groups or clusters and a random sample of these clusters are selected. All individuals in the selected clusters are included in the sample. So if like in our classroom, we have our groups. If someone walks in and chose randomly to take two of our groups, that just means like the whole group of those people in those two groups would leave and they would take some information from just those two subgroups of our classroom. And that's a very small sample, of course. Anytime you have a sample of data, the more people you involve in your survey, the more likely you are to get more accurate results. And the smaller group of people you involve, of course, usually the smaller or less accurate your data is going to turn out to be because you're trying to represent a population. And like our classroom, for example, is a very small portion of a population of Holly Springs High School even, for example. We have 34. There are about 2,400 students at Holly Springs High School. So even our classroom is not a great representation of our entire high school. And that's not even talking about the world outside of our doors. So we're going to work on some more of these in class. But now that you have all the vocabulary written down and you've listened to it, you'll have a better idea of what type